The goal of this video is to familiarize you with all of the different components of the Creo Parametric User Interface. Let's start at the very top. We have our title bar up top here that shows us what program we're in as well as the file that we are in right now. Way over on the left side, we have our quick access toolbar. So this will give you, just like the name indicates, quick access to common commands such as new, open, save, undo, and redo. This also contains the drop down to allow you to switch between different open files. So here I can jump into a different file, as you can see, and I can return back to the previous file. Of course, way over on the right side, we have our minimize, maximize, and close buttons. Do note that as far as closing a file, you do not have an X button in the actual drawing window. Instead, it is here in the quick access toolbar. So this X close button will close the current file. And of course, the one in the upper right will close the entire program. Next, we have our file menu. As with most programs, selecting the file menu will allow us to do common things like create a new file, open a file, save, print, etc. Then we have our ribbon. So the ribbon is where we're going to get most of our tools. We have different tabs on the ribbon. We will be spending most of our time on the model tab. On each tab, we have different groups. So we have the operations group, the get data group, datum group, etc. Many other programs call these panels. So you'll probably hear me call these panels or groups in my videos. And then of course, inside each group are separate tools related to that group. For example, in the datum group, I can create datum planes, datum axes, and datum points. Now on the left side of your screen, you're going to see your model tree. Other programs refer to something similar as a browser. Here in the model tree, you are going to be able to see the components that make up your design. That includes any datums. So here we have the existing right top and front datums. I can see the overall part name. And then if I have any features, those will be nested underneath the overall part. I will switch to a different part here that has some features. And here you can see the overall part name. And then you can see the features that make up that part. And if I expand these features, I will see the sketches that were used to create those features. I'm going to switch back to my blank drawing here. Next, we have our drawing window. Inside of our drawing window, we are going to see our default datum planes. So as I highlight each of them, we'll see the top datum plane, the right datum plane, and the front datum plane. This will allow us to begin a sketch on one of our principal planes here. In the top of our drawing area, we also have our graphics toolbar. This will allow us to change the way we view our design. I have some zooming and panning tools. I can also change the way the design looks in terms of is it wireframe? Is it shaded? Is it realistic looking? And I also have the ability to change my view orientation to view it from different directions. I can also control the visibility of items such as datum planes, axes and points, annotations, and the spin center of my design. We'll explore many of these tools more in depth in some future videos. Moving up to the upper right side of the screen are a few helpful tools. First of all, the magnifying glass will allow you to search for a command. We have a lot of commands. Some of them are hidden in drop downs. If you cannot find a specific command, you can always click the magnifying glass and type it in. Let's say, for example, I was looking for the round tool. I'll begin typing round and I can see all of my different round options and I can simply click on any of these items to start the command. I can also see it highlight on screen for where it is located. I'll go ahead and escape out of that and cancel. I also have my learning connector that will take you to PTC where you can access some learning tools. And then we have the overall help function with the question mark here, which is a more in-depth help feature so that you can search for topics on any issues that you might be having with the software. Going down to the bottom of the screen, we're going to have our status bar. The status bar almost acts as a command line. You'll want to watch the status bar because it will give you helpful information for whatever it is that you're doing. For example, 
if I were to start the sketch command, the status bar tells me that I need to select a plane or surface to define the sketch plane. I'll go ahead and cancel for now, but again, whatever command I might select, I'm going to get some helpful information down there at the status bar. So always pay attention to that. In the bottom right corner of your screen, you are going to find your selection filter. The selection filter controls what will be selected when you click on screen. If I click the drop down, I can see I'm currently set to geometry, but I can be more specific if I only want to pick edges or surfaces or vertices or many other options in here. By default, this is set to geometry. That usually works for me. I just simply move around and select the item that I'm wanting. But if you do find yourself in a spot where you're having a difficult time selecting a specific point, for example, you can use the filter dropdown and maybe in that case, choose vertex as your selection filter. That concludes this overview of the Creo Parametric User Interface.